Hello, this is Jeffrey Cruz for Splatspace, and this is the first of a series of videos we're doing about some very simple add-ons that you can do for Scratch programming. So, <clears throat> all of these add-ons that we're going to do are only going to be for Scratch 1.4 because they use the Pico board and the current version, the new version of Scratch, Scratch 2.0, still is only running in the browser. So until they release the install um, <coughs> files so that you can install it locally, this is just going to be for Scratch 1.4. So this, of course, is a Pico board, formerly called a Scratch board, and it's an interface, a sensor interface for Scratch, sold by SparkFun, and it just plugs in by USB, and all of the sensors, of course, are already native to Scratch. They're already included in the menus. So <coughs> this gives you um, some ways that you can really get a kid a lot more interested in Scratch and start to ease them into hardware if they're interested in going in that direction. Because you can use things like this. This is what's called the Mini Arcade Joystick. It is sold by Adafruit and some others. I like to support Adafruit, however, because they have done such an amazing amount of tutorials and other educational, um, <clears throat> other educational resources that I really like to give them that support. So this mini arcade joystick is one that actually uses four momentary switches around the center instead of two potentiometers like a lot of other ones do. And that allows you to mate it very, very easily with the scratch board because you have these four inputs at the bottom. So there's off the cable is coming five wires. There's one wire for each of the switches and then one black one, which is the common ground for all of them. And so you can either just uh, you know, clip it directly to the four input you know, plugs that, you, that come with the Pico board, or you can go get three 32nd inch phone plugs, get four of those, and wire them up, them, wire them up yourself. And if you do, then that's a great way to introduce a kid to soldering and hardware because it's about as simple as can be. You only have to solder up one, the, the ground line wire, to one of the plugs because the ground is actually common across all four. So you have to make like these five solder connections and then you know, solder them to the plugs and you're set. And what we're doing is we're just assigning each of the switches, each of the plugs, A, B, C, D, it's arbitrarily to up, down, left, right. And then in Scratch, this is a very simple program to show how it works. We have the forever loop, you know, with sensor A connected, B connected, C and D. And then, of course, um, we, I'm using the OR operator for key, up arrow, down arrow, left arrow, and right arrow. So it will use either the arrows, if you don't have a joystick, or it will use the joystick. So, and then, of course, each one of these will change the Y and X by some amount. So then when you're running this program, let me start it up, then you can just control Scratchy or whatever sprite you're using with a joystick. And this has gotten kids really interested. When I've been showing it around, they're really, really excited about the possibility that they can now use Scratch and they can make quote unquote real video games because hey, you know, using a joystick. So I've made some other printable modifications as well. The, the first one, the obvious one, of course, is this box, which is a 3D printable box that I put up on Thingiverse. It has a press fit lid, and it's sized for the top plate and for the entire joystick to fit in here, so you can just hold it without having to hang on to the actual electronics. And um, that is up on Thingiverse, and it just, it's just called the Mini Arcade Joystick Box, and uh, you can easily search for it. The other thing I made is a set of these axis limiting plates. Because right now, this is actually an eight-way joystick. We have diagonals as well as left and right and up and down because you can actuate two switches at the same time. So I made these plates that are sized to fit these studs on the bottom. This, for instance, is one that is sized so that I put it on this way. There we go. It limits your sprite to only one axis of motion because it's blocked off the up and down and all the diagonals. So this is for more sort of like a, you know, a Space Invaders game, as you might think. Or um, if you turn it the other way, of course, then your sprite is limited to only the Y axis, and that, of course, is more like a table tennis game or something like that. And the other plate, which I don't have with me right now, 
just cuts out the diagonals. So you only have X and Y motion, and all the diagonals are cut out. So that's for more of a you know a Pac-Man style movement. So those are also up on Thingiverse, and it just says mini arcade joystick limiting plates. So if you don't have a 3D printer, you should get up with your local hackerspace, find out who that is. Uh, probably on hackerspaces.org is the best place to look and get up with them because they will probably be uh, willing to work with you and you know, get these add-ons printed so that you can continue to, to teach Scratch. So as I said, this is the first video that we're doing with a, you know, the simplest possible mod and the simplest possible program that you can think of. Later on, we're also going to be working with the uh, other style of joystick that uses two potentiometers because these four inputs, of course, aren't just yes, no, you know, connected or not. They are actually, um, they read a range of resistances. And so that allows you to use a resistive joystick as well. So we'll be getting into that in later videos, but for now, this is just some really nice stuff that you can get kids really excited about um, with Scratch. And uh, that's all. Thanks for watching.